Hello and welcome back to the Sharks world ladies and gentlemen. We've got a long one in store for us today. In a similar vein to my Great White Shark vs Humpback Whale video, today we're going to look at an incident involving a shiver of dusky sharks and a humpback whale calf. Despite the fact that I'm going to be going into great detail in this video, I would still highly recommend that you give the source article a read. I will leave a link to it in the description. But before we get into it, let me extend an invitation to the Sharks World Discord as well as some of my other platforms. Feel free to give them a look. And with those caveats out of the way, as always ladies and gentlemen, grab you a Celsius, have a seat at the table, and let's take a look at Dusky Sharks versus a Humpback Whale. So, this event took place on July 16th, 2014, three kilometers offshore of Port John in South Africa. It involved a shiver of roughly 10 to 20 dusky sharks, ranging from 2 to 3 meters in length. The humpback whale calf was about 4 meters in length, with no mother whale or escort whale in sight. Makes you wonder what happened to the mother. This whole event was witnessed by one of the authors of the source article, Morty Hardenberg. I apologize if I butchered that name. It was also witnessed by other sardine charter boat operators. The attack took about five hours and concluded around three o'clock p.m. Now, as for the sharks, I will once again talk about how this incident and other incidents like it show just how effective and smart sharks are. The dusky sharks followed in a loose group behind the whale and attacked it while it was at the surface taking a breath or when it was diving down. Now here's the really interesting part. All attacks from the sharks were concentrated on the left hand side of the whale between the pectoral fin and the tail fluke. Almost no bites took place on the right side. Most bites just resulted in tooth impressions and scrapes with little tissue removal. This is literally death by a thousand cuts. Now let's pause here for a moment and talk about this. Most people think of dolphins or whales when it comes to teamwork in the ocean. But here, this whole shiver of sharks, say that three times fast, communicated amongst each other to attack one side of the whale over and over again. And remember, they specifically attacked between the pectoral fin and the tail fluke. That is a concentrated area for a desired effect. I raised a point in my Great White Shark versus Humpback Whale video that I will bring up here. The fact that these sharks knew which area to attack and play the waiting game in order to avoid injury shows that these sharks have clearly done this before. There's another factor in this I want to bring up as well, and it's actually a tactic used in war. The mental game. This incident took place for five hours. This whole time, the calf is alive, swimming faster than it normally would, and thrashing vigorously whenever the dusky sharks attacked. Not only does this use up more energy, but this stresses the animal out as well which in turn uses even more energy, at least mentally. While the bites alone didn't do too much damage to the thick hide of the whale, the mental exhaustion is probably what caused it to drown in the end. These events had little to no effect on the sharks, as the observers noted that the sharks were very deliberate in their moves and showed no signs of intraspecific aggression. Now to be clear, I'm not saying the sharks thought to actually use the mental aspect of this incident as a tactic, but it is the result of the sharks' strategy. Something else that's very interesting and way more tragic is that apparently multiple adult humpbacks passed the calf while the sharks were attacking it, and none stepped in to help. This part here even surprised me, but in a way confirms that whales don't actively save animals from other animals. That includes you, 
lady who thought that one humpback whale was quote unquote saving you from a tiger shark. I did a whole video on it, go check it out. But getting back on topic, the many bites and scars from the sharks eventually started to bleed, which in turn all but guaranteed the calf's end. Its condition deteriorated throughout the day, and eventually the animal stopped surfacing. And that will do it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. Quite an event, wouldn't you agree? It makes me wonder how often this actually happens in the wild, and how many different shark species partake in stuff like this. We know great whites and duskies do it, and apparently bull sharks do when it comes to blue whales. I'm still looking for that article, by the way. Who knows what other shark species do this? Let me know which ones you think do in the comments below. But this is going to be where we end things for now. Thank you once again for giving me some of your time, and I will see you in the next video. Until then.